Hello, welcome to Workbook 1, Brainstorming Your Project and MVP. Now, before you have seen this video, you should have already watched the Week 1 course introduction, as well as the second week uh, introductory video, which is Picking Your Project and MVP. I first want to give you a little bit of housekeeping. On many of the slides, we've moved directions down here into the comments panel. And the way you get to that, if you're unfamiliar with Microsoft PowerPoint, is to click on this button right here. And that's the normal button. So click on that. And then you'll have the opportunity, uh, when you click into this, you can change the size of this comment window. So just be aware that if you hit a slide, it seems like there should be directions and they're not there. Just click the normal button and then go into the comments panel. Let's look at our, our workbook for this week. The focus is on the innovative idea. That's what we want you to zero in and on. And the first thing is to find your target customer. Now, if in the case of a nonprofit, it's going to be a client or donor. And you're going to want to try and identify what is the problem you're solving. And then the next thing is, how do you know that's a problem definitively? That's pretty huge, definitively. How do you know? And then how much uncertainty? Now, this uncertainty is the domain for Lean Startup. It is the domain of, of, uh, of uh, yeah, of entrepreneurship. That's going to be the theme for each one of these questions. So is the question you're, you're, excuse me, the problem you're trying to solve, is it important or urgent? And then how do you know it definitively? How much uncertainty do you have? Now, if you have uncertainty in each one of these questions, that tells you your project is a good candidate for a lean startup approach. If you have a very low degree of uncertainty, in other words, you have solid answers for each one of these, then you're probably not talking about an innovative project. You're really not talking about a lean startup type of project. So keep pressing in until you have identified something you believe will be innovative in your, in your setting, which you believe could be very much in doubt. You don't know if it's going to work or not. You don't really have the answer definitively. So that's how you're going to approach these five questions. Now you're going to go into activity two. You're going to list in this long list over here on this side, 15 to 20 ways your product or program offers value. Now you may not have 15 to 20, but the idea is you want to brainstorm as much as can and just stream things, stream write, and try and fill that list because what you're going to do is out of that long list, you're going to create a short list. So you're going to get this nice long list over there, and out of that, you're going to say, okay, what are maybe the, the five that or three that seem the most likely will have traction with who your customers, donors, or clients have? Now, one thing we recommend is if you have different segments, you may want to do different copies of this slide, because otherwise it's going to get pretty muddled. In activity three, we're going to start working with assumptions. So this slide is all about writing a statement that describes it, what you see in the future for it, and which identifies one or more of these assumptions. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight here is you're going to hear the phrase assumptions and hypotheses throughout the course. And so I want to point out that these are going to be used interchangeably. Assumption, hypothesis, assumptions, hypotheses. Just get used to that language because you test a hypothesis. The way I think about this is a hunch. Hypothesis is a hunch. So in this slide, activity three, one or more of these. You do not have to list all five of these. But whichever one of these you choose, zero in on that one and work from there. In activity four, you're going to actually create the MVP or the minimum viable product. And you're going to use this to get your customer feedback and data, which follows as we move through this process. The idea is you want to get something out there to test your assumptions right away. Think of it like you're floating a thought balloon. You're running something by someone to see what they think, you know. And so... If right out of the gate, it sounds like it has traction, well, well, then you can continue. But if it sounds like something that's close but not quite, well, that may be an example of a pivot. And if it's just something like totally not going to work at all, that's when you stop what you're going to do 
rethink, and then maybe go into a pivot. Now, the project itself, the minimum viable product, if you're in a nonprofit setting, it could be a pilot program that you're going to describe to a foundation and a grant. Um, and that's real world type of thing because you, it is all hypothesis, hypothesis at this point. It could be an outline draft brochure of a new program that you're asking for client feedback on. And so it's, a, we've already talked here, we've raised the issue of different types of stakeholders. You can get information from a client, information from a donor. It's whoever is your stakeholder. Whoever you are targeting this towards is who you want to get the feedback from. And you can always jump ahead to Activity 5, and there are some questions up there to help you kind of frame up how you might think about this. So what you're going to be asked to do in this section is, and the first thing is describe the key aspects of your M MVP that you're going to seek market feedback on. So seeking market feedback is saying, hey, I've got this idea, this minimum viable product. I want to run it by my stakeholders and see what they think about it. And then you want to think through how you're actually going to test that assumption to see if it's true or not. And that's going to take you lastly to this activity, the build, measure, learn loop that you saw in the first couple or Andrew talked about in the first couple of videos. This idea of build, measure, learn is going to be a constant refrain you're going to get throughout this course where you summarize the MVP, you come down here to talk about the data that you're going to collect, what are the potential, uh, potential pivots you based upon, um, based upon the data, you're going to rebuild it, you're going to go out, you're going to test it, you're going to learn from it, and you're going to continue to do this loop. And if you remember, the idea is to over in each iteration is to reduce the degree of uncertainty, increase the amount of surety, which means you're going to increase your success. All right, um, that's it for today, and we'll be talking to you later in the next video. Thanks.